All right, so scanning. Uh, studio's getting a little bit more messy, but not too bad. Uh, first off, you know, discover your soul. I just wanted to let you guys know that, you know, I too am always um, evaluating how my life and my art are connecting. It's really important to me. And I think even with non-objective art, there is a hidden message. So even when I look at a piece, you know, like this one, uh, I feel good about it because what it does for me is it shows me that, you know, there is calm, but then there's also uh, a bit of turmoil underneath the surface, which is how I feel about our world right now. You know, I originally thought I would be doing more with this piece and I may, but for now I'm good. Like I want to just enjoy it for what it stands for at this moment. I'm not in a hurry to finish it or it may be finished and I don't need to make that decision right now. All I need to do is look at my work, wherever it is, whatever stage it's in, and find those things that speak to me and then weigh them. Like, you know, and it's really time will tell. Sometimes you can't force these things to, to become finished before their time. I think I spend a lot of time just staring at my work like this piece which uh, I had a, you know, I think on YouTube, I showed the version before it got to this stage, but I stared at this piece across my studio as I sat at my desk days and days and days. And, you know, for all of that work we've done in Discover Your Soul, I continued to try and look for things that are important to me. And it's the fact that they are recurring and I can, now once you identify those things, you can then, rely on those things to add content to your work. I love spirals. I love marks. I love pattern. I love drips. You know, these unusual shapes here, numbers, text, collage material, you know, the drippy spray paint and, you know, the, the use of a pencil, just a simple number two pencil and bold line. And, you know, I could go on and on blind contour drawing. You know, in a piece like this, where it, it's, it's really, you know, we've been talking about the all over pattern, the all over pattern abstract composition now in Masterclass 8. And right now, you know, that's kind of where this piece is. If you converted this into black and white, and it's not too far from that anyways, because it started out as black and white, and I only added just a bit of color. So essentially you can see that the, the darks, the lights and the midtones, they're kind of all evenly distributed. And that's what the all over pattern's about. And, and the all over pattern does not necessarily have to have focal points. Right now, I feel like there are areas of interest, but not so much that you can't still enjoy the whole piece and kind of go through the layers because there are many, many layers. And it's this 3D impact that I'm enjoying right now. So again, I, I'm gonna leave this painting for now, just like the pink grid and stare at them, right? As I continue to work on more pieces. But the point of this is not only discover your soul, but think about the mark making. I think about the mark making. I think about the color. This is a limited palette. Uh, this one is a limited palette. This one over here is a limited palette. This one's a limited palette. And you know, the marks, so all the work that you did in mark making, all the work that you do in color, all the work you do in shape, texture, direction, size, all those things. This is where it all matters because when you're in the thick of a painting, you know, you realize that these things, uh, the tools in your toolbox, your design elements and how they relate to you personally, that's all you have. That is your language. And what you're doing is you're strengthening the fluency of your ability to understand who you are, as an artist and what could be more important than that, right? And if you haven't done the work and if you struggle, then that's why you're struggling. The idea is to increase your ability to manage that visual language of art and know who you are so that you get stuck less and you have more ways to solve your problems because you know the things that you love. And so I just wanted to share one thing that happened late last night. So I was in my studio and uh, I think I've shown these two paintings um, 
probably in my studio tour that I did on YouTube. But anyways, these two paintings are, um, well, they are older. Uh, they were in my old studio and when I moved to the new one, I uh, brought them back out, which is what's happening. And uh, so the one on the left, what I did was I wanted to, and the one on the right was a slot board and it was all pink. And uh, the one on the left, what I did was I took four colors from it. I took red, green, blue, and I had alizarin orange. And, and they were just colors that I, I felt were in that painting on, on the left. I mixed them up on my board and I created a, um, a swatch. You know, the swatch was done with the colors that I chose for my palette and they're right here. And I was like, well, okay, you know, th that's, that's okay. I mean, I'm not, not sure. I really love these colors on the bottom of the palette of the swatch, you know, much more than say the colors on top, which I was definitely getting a lot of greens, but then I started to mix and mix. And the more you mix, the more variety you get. And you can only fit so much on a sheet of paper like this. But then I had this massive amount of paint left on my, this, this, uh, it's now clean, but I had mounds and mounds of leftover oil paint because my swatch was done. And I just, I used this tool and I moved it all into the middle of my table. And I literally had a mound of ugly, gross paint. It was like a, uh, you know, army green because it was all the colors combined. And I was really determined, even at like one in the morning, not to throw that paint out. But the color really kind of just was really not, it was, it was just like the ugliest color. If you ever wanted to find an ugly color, it was murky, muddy, um, even worse than an army green. But anyways, because I was determined not to throw that color out, and because I had done my swatch and I knew the potential, it was still there. I just had to work with that pile of murkiness and so what i did was um, i made four different uh, very highly desaturated grays you can see that on the right and it's this is just a, a layer but the point is this is a 48 by 48 painting and it did take up the rest of the paint that was on that plastic tabletop that i was 20 years ago i probably would have thrown it away in frustration but again because of all the color mixing i've learned to do like you in the master classes um, I made it into four colors that I liked and I think that's the whole point is to not give up no matter how you know how your color mixture is just keep working with it until you get to find colors that you really love so I've got like this deep burgundy and then desaturated red but these are all very sophisticated colors and they're on top of a slot board so is it meant to be finished? Of course not. This is just another layer. But the point is I didn't waste the paint and I moved my painting forward by finding those colors that I love. And regarding shape and texture, uh, this slot board, as you can see in the pink, was highly, highly, highly textured. It's a slot board. What else should it be? But by putting in these large areas and these interesting shapes of solid color, uh, I introduce a sense of calm, a sense of quiet. So if you ask yourself, what don't you have? That's what I didn't have. I didn't have quiet, solid areas. And we talk a lot about solid colors. What makes a solid color? And we talk a lot about visual versus physical texture. And for the most part, you know, there is some differences here now between the visual texture and the physical texture. The physical texture is still there, but if I were to sand this once it dries, because it's oil and cold wax over um, on this panel, I have to wait till it dries, but the physical texture can be sanded. And then as I, I kind of uh, was looking at this painting late at night again, I remembered a book I had. And I wanna walk over here. And you know, due to my heritage, um, I somehow came upon this book this little tiny book here. It's Japanese, it's written in Japanese. Um, and I, to be honest, I ordered it. I don't know when, but I did and kind of forgot about it. But then I brought it out the other day and I was flipping through it. And after I was up late last night at one and I looked at that painting, you know, with the, the big uh, swatches of color, I started to go through this this morning and I started to notice these very strange and unusual color combinations that reminded me of what I had done 
um, like you know like this for example they're, they're colors that are just so odd and I don't I can't read what it really says I mean it, it does have the word in English as well as Japanese but the point is I don't know how they I can't read this to find out what they were thinking like how did they put these color combinations together but the point is uh, I'm inspired by this book it inspires me to want to explore the colors that are in this book in these combinations because you know they're part of my heritage right so one thing leads to another as far as content even in a non-objective piece and you'll also notice that these two pieces had nothing in common really um, the one on the right was a slot board with a bunch of pink on it the one on the left you know I think I showed that in another video but it, it was kind of like a grid but I want to I want to get back into it now and actually develop it so again because I took the colors from the left painting four colors and I mixed them uh, together and with black and white making tints tones and shades and then made those grays on and put them on the right can you see how the colors on the right and on the left actually are quite now just talk about color there's harmony and that doesn't surprise me because right I took the colors from the gray painting mix them up and put them on the right painting there's pink on both sides because a bit of that pink came from a slot it was a slot board from another painting anyways um, this is how everything comes together and it's really really important uh, to again think about these seven design elements and how you respond to them you as an artist do have preferences and what we're trying to do in these master classes is figure out what makes you unique uh, figure out what in your personal voice makes you different from all other artists because you are different from all other artists and you need to really uh, capitalize on that to uh, prove to yourself that you have preferences that nobody else has in combinations that nobody else has and so once you figure out what those preferences are and with the understanding of color and design you can do anything that you want you can solve any problem that you have uh, and so the work you're doing right now in each master class is so important and that's why I ask you to go through them one at a time in sequence because they build on one another and what's going to happen is what's happening to me now I may have been painting for 30 years but I am learning from my own master classes and that means that makes me happy because it what it says to me is that they're working and if they can work for me I know they can work for you okay so again happy Mother's Day um, hope you're doing well bye now